Hi there, I'm Dr. Nancy Hillis. And I'm Dr. Bruce Sawhill. And we have got something so exciting, exciting news. A big surprise. So we went out to the mailbox and something came in. And let's find out what is in here, okay? So Bruce, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip this open. All right. Okay. Let's see what's in here. Oh my goodness. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you've been on here at all, you know we've been talking about The Adjacent Possible, the second book in this series that we've been working on for... Almost two years. Yeah. It's been quite a long journey. And this book is so exciting for us. This is an author copy, so it's not published yet. We've got to go through it and look at everything, uh, but we're so excited. Oh my gosh. I'll put that up closer so you can see the cover. And it's, uh, it's thick. It's, it's like heavy. Do it's you feel like, that, Bruce? Yeah, it's like well, <laughs> 444 pages. <laughs> we yeah. just lucked out with that number. We didn't try for it. You can see how thick it is. And the reason why it's 444 pages is that it has 25 artists in here um, who have their stories and their art in this amazing book. And the idea was to animate the concepts of the Adjacent Possible. And you may know about the first Adjacent Possible book here which is the adjacent possible evolve your art from blank canvas to prolific artist. And we published that a year ago and it's a bestseller and award winner. It has won the reader's favorite gold medal award and the book excellence award. So we love this book and many artists have loved this so much. And then that led to this next book. And how, how did that happen, Bruce? Well, we started talking to some of our artist friends and, they, and came up with the idea. Well, the first book was fairly theoretical, abstract. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be nice to illustrate all the concepts in there with stories and art from real live artists? Yeah. And I'll show you, just kind of flip through a bit. It's got lots of photos. In fact, there's over 200 photos in here of art, of amazing art. Most of it abstract painting, but some of it uh, representational and even a little bit of sculpture in here. And so I'll just flip through quickly, but you can see there's a lot going on and amazing artists in here. So anyway, that's something we wanted you to be aware of and and see what you think about that. So we're so excited about The Adjacent Possible because it's a novel concept that I believe is at the root of creativity. And it's this novel approach to artistic creativity. And we see it as the science of creativity and the art of the possible, the adjacent possible. And so Bruce is going to talk to us a little bit about that. He had an interesting experience with surfing and there are many ways that the adjacent possible shows up. It's not just limited to art. That's right, it's art and life and science and everything. So let's take a look at Bruce's talk on the adjacent possible. Perhaps also a little comment about the adjacent possible. I First weekend I was here, I bought a surfboard and uh, got a wetsuit and paddled out and proceeded to fall down a lot. But I had these two approaches. There was the Frank Sinatra approach, is, I did it my way. And then there, and there was the bliss ninny go with the flow approach. And what was interesting is both of them failed miserably. <laughs> that the Frank Sinatra approach is, I'm gonna take the surfboard and I'm gonna go there, is that the way you had different ideas and you'd end up, you know, head down in the sand with your surfboard on your head. And then I thought, oh, the Bliss Ninny, I'll just, I'll just like let the wave decide where to go. And it had about the same result. And I thought, well, there has to be somewhere in between, something that is kind of um, 
there was a Buddhist saying I came across before living here, and that was, hang on tightly, let go lightly. And I saw this while surfing, that at any point, I imagined radiating out from the front of the surfboard a whole line, a whole group of glowing lines which were possible futures I could take. And whenever I chose one, it not only changed where I was, but it, it changed the shape of what was around me. If you're surfing on fairly small waves, it actually changes the shape of the wave, too. And I realized that each of those lines, this, this sort of fanning out, um, you know, fan of, fan of glowing lines in my imagination was the adjacent possible. Every one of them at every moment was the adjacent possible of where I could go in the next moment. And whenever I chose it, it changed the next reality to a new choice and a new set of lines. And then much later, um, er, I encountered this, this same expression, the adjacent possible in the context of evolutionary biology, where it talked about the circumstances where evolution might take the ecosystem depends on the circumstances of the moment. And the whatever happens next changes the landscape. Like if there isn't a platypus, for instance, doesn't come into being, then perhaps a whole bunch of other things that we've never seen can come into being. And this is going moment by moment. The rug is being pulled out from the world continuously. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we have an opportunity now to see this in a different way, perhaps as embodied in dance. So I guess that's what I'd like to say by way of introduction. So, you know, we've been doing all this abstract work. We opened up creative channels, we're work making, we're taking risks, the adjacent possible, uh, value, all of that. And really, it's all to get us ready for figure drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is actually to get us ready for what we're ready to do in our painting, which is to step into the adjacent possible continually and to continually experiment. 